Can turn there, but I need to turn there. Ah, no, okay. Eh, this is a little clumsy. are all right at the moment we have no clue I have no clue what they have to do there another chains are working hmm. okay Maybe this is enough for the mechanism because it's not electric. I don't know for what the machine is good there. I don't understand so much. But yeah. Yeah, now it's working, okay. Thank you. 
Okay, this is up there. There must be a way that we can go there, but... Um, Now we have it here, and now what? What? What does it tell? I don't know. Yeah, I have to look up. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't really understand. Suddenly there is a path that was not there before, it seems. Ah. Oh. Why I didn't see it before? Am I so blind? I don't know. Okay. Ah, now I come up. Okay, I see, I see. Okay. All right. Looks like someone was killed or an accident, I'm not sure. A lot of portals. A lot of portals here. Okay, wow, what happened here? Wow, the, uh, here are so many ways, I don't know where to go. Ah, okay. This is blocked, so I have to go down. Yeah, this was just a path. Ah, I can go through there. This is a labyrinth. I, I will not be able to, like, remember where I am at all. 
Because I cannot orientate so much. Okay. What the heck? This is a uh, one to Soria, I guess. Okay, this portal goes to Solia. All right. Ah, this is the opposite. Okay. Okay. And here's another one. But this is the one that like leads me to wait a second Okay. We are back at Hunrad. I don't know this place. Arai, Larful Notes by Farley. Takes about three to five days for a single Arai love Larfe to change colors after being moved to a new surface. Pulsing stops immediately upon removal from Koptar. Induced by polyarchs. Cloning has been extremely easy, like potatoes easy. Okay. 
plant fiber yellow bone light yellow array encrustment green metals gold pink copper red orange titanium orange silver red aluminium aluminum red orange tech mofang tech magenta villain extrusions near white stone granite kaptar teal blue sandstone hunrat light blue source stone mofang deep purple shale marai very light blue polyarch pots always purple to do i'm curious about the effect of combining various base surface still a bit odd experimenting with the life forms the light they emit is handy given our limited supply of diesel fuel okay this seems important for us later okay a picture Funny, this is a uh, I don't know the English term for it. In the Bible is described a very special uh, chest in that the God is inside and it's described with angel wings keeping like going to the midst <laughs> okay we found it mist oh mist is that referring a game adventures and ages of mist and beyond <laughs> this place is a from caverns miles beneath the New Mexico desert, the Dinai ruled an empire that lasted 10 millennia. They wrote linking books that allowed them to span universes, ignoring the primitive humans that infested the surface. But the glory of Dinai was brought low more centuries ago, and their ages were left empty and abandoned until now. Called to the desert, we have found our way down to Dinai. Its secrets are in our hands. Uh, and its future is ours to determine. The next chapter of Denai is unwritten. <laughs> it, it introduced us to the surreal worlds of Mist. Ah, now I wanna play Mist. <laughs> now I wanna play it. Cerberus Beas Wolf. Cerberus. Hmm, let me check on that. Uh, so, the Cerberus book referred to a Kickstarter project that is a letting that that is. Uh, I cannot talk anymore, I'm so tired. That is uh, unknown. <laughs> okay. This I don't understand. Maybe someone that played Mist understands this. <sighs> okay, the villain. They, I can't find the words. It's such a foreign life cycle. Or poor herbs not. They launch themselves across the expanses of space, preserved for eons, until at last the technological arcs can hone in and carry them to a new home. They have no connection with their predecessors. But in spite of this, perhaps because of this, they have amazing recollections of their history. Their stories are epic, reaching back through the eons. Unlike many of us who were abducted, they were abducted as a whole. Their scoop moved an entire facility that was about to be annihilated. I have come to believe that they 
perhaps more than any of us, have a deeper understanding of whatever this strange system is that we find ourselves in. I need to write this down. We buried Jai Evan today. This place never really agreed with her. Kept to herself mostly, depressed and downcast. Anyway, I digress. I stayed after the brief words were spoken. I was the last to leave. I wandered to the dome, as I often do, and looked out at the undulating, saurian weirdness beyond the cell wall. Movement caught my eye. Now, on very rare occasions, we've seen mofangs scrambling about in the distance. Okay. But there have been fewer and fewer sightings over the years. But before me was a tall, haggard mofang running desperately, almost directly toward me from one of the distant structures. It, I still can't tell the gender, got closer and closer. I thought it would see me and stop, or turn around, or be curious about the strange dome and our world inside it. But it continued running quickly, almost directly, to my position. I was frozen in place with curiosity, until my reflexes took over at the last moment and I uh, leapt out of the way. But rather than hit the dome and fall backward or come through into Unrat, the dome flashed its familiar tone and the mofang vanished. I was stunned for a bit, but I retrieved my wits and stepped into the dome myself to quickly get to the other side. After getting through, I immediately turned around and saw the mofang outside, on the other side of the dome, still running away from whatever it feared, but as if it had no sense of passing around the dome. As surprising as the event was, it did serve to settle a few things in my mind. I always wondered how no one on earth noticed what had replaced this chunk of Arizona we have here. Huh. I've got to end. Again, there are those who argue with me. Over and over I demonstrate that in almost every case, whatever the process was that brought us here, it occurred at a pivotal moment. They tell their stories and they still can't admit that the abduction actually saved each of us. All of us. What is it in human nature that grasps so strongly to the past that we blame our saviors for stealing it from us. Okay, just one more went before bad. If each of us was individually saved from something, then maybe all of us were corporately saved from something larger. Can we really be sure what's left? And this, the arrivers come from various places and times. Sarah got here almost 15 years ago from the year 2055 and Uziel got here two and a half years ago from 1942. What does that mean? Time here is shuffled and chaotic compared to Earth. What state is Earth in right now? When is Earth right now? It's 3.15 am and I feel compelled to journal this craziness. After spending most of yesterday meditating with the Arai and then most of this evening discussing the nature of these worlds with Cecil, I had just a sip of infamous Hunra Tuch and collapsed in my chair. Well, I just awoke from a dream. I'm not one who puts a lot of credibility in dreams, but maybe the Arai were able to move something in me to understand, or possibly because of the intense discussion my subconscious mind was triggered to be able to sort out some logical connections. Or maybe it was the hooch. The dream. I was tending a garden. An immense garden. And it wasn't for food or flowers. It was just about the health of the garden. I kept working and working to control it and contain it and make it healthier. But the garden seemed to fight me at every turn. And after what seemed like days of work, I finally gave up in frustration. And as I stood there doing nothing, the garden flourished before my eyes. 
growing and spreading in every direction. Because I realized the system that the plants were based on was not about me shaping and controlling. The natural system of plants is healthier when they are out of control, when they are free to spread and intermingle and cross-pollinate and mutate. Now, from a human point of view, that may not provide what I want. I get smaller fruit and smaller flowers and untidiness, but from the point of view of the plants, they grow stronger and much more resilient and resistant. The more they are scattered, the higher their odds of surviving. And now that I contemplate, I realize that even the individual plant seeds may not appreciate the benefit of what's happening. They are torn far from the origins, forced into situations that seem extreme, possibly even destroyed by these new environments. But for the seeds that survive, ah, the seeds that survive. Now that's where real growth, strength and abundance comes from. It's so beautiful and terrifying. Beyond the beauty of it all is a system and structure that defies understanding. Okay, what if this is all a natural process? There are signs of something behind it all, but well hidden signs. So, well, if I look at all of this, the cell, the tree, the water, the seeds, the hub, the health, even the abductions, well, there seems to be a, a grand system or plan. The plan doesn't take me into account. It is unemotionally intent on the health of something much bigger that may hurt my feelings, but well, what am I in the entire scheme of the universe? I have no idea what, if anything, might have put this process into motion, but that is irrelevant. Tomorrow I will talk to Cecil. He could be swayed from his battery plan. I really don't journal much. I came to write this down because I am distraught. As I contemplate the plan that I have set in motion, I realize that I have become the destroyer of worlds. I sat down to write, to seek some cathartic tranquilization, tranquilization and I realized the last thing I journaled was some esoterically beautiful philosophy about letting this garden grow, not so reaffirming or calming. But nevertheless, here's my reasoning, because I must write this down, simply, it's us or them. Complexly, if this is some kind of garden and we're the plants or seeds or whatever, well, some of us have gotten together and decided that we're the better choice to survive. If the others have unilaterally decided that we all won't survive, I am more fit, damn it. This is not me. I want to be calm and garden or ungarden or grow or. What gives one spe species the right to destroy another species? Who gets to choose? Do I just lay down and die because the more aggressive species thinks they are better or more powerful? What brutal scale do I use to measure the good of some against the life of others? Does law ever destroy in order to help more survive? To help love itself to survive? Yeah, well, but this is evolution. And if the Mofang decided, yeah, we are stronger than the humans, yeah, that it is. We do the same. Does that even make sense? Can I kill because I think it will bring about more love? What if I'm not even capable of understanding the situation of hate versus love? Maybe I am the hater. Do I generate this love delusion to help me maintain my sanity in light of the choice I have made? My god, it's too much. If these are just my walls of delusion, then I chose to live within them. I am a seed, scattered by the wind. But I will not simply be trampled. I will kick and scream and survive. May god have mercy on my soul. 
Ja, okay. Oh, this is a really cute scissor. Paper flowers? Looks like yin and yang. <laughs> This I know, but I don't know from where right now. Puyo? Was it Puyo? Or something like that? Okay, so this was Farley's Walt. And this I think are... Maybe... Also shall be stuff of... Uh, Maybe games or movies and things, but I don't know everything. If you know, please write down in the comments. Okay, so we travel back. Um, wrong side. 